Hello and welcome. Okay, I'm live both places. Good. Hello, hello. Let's see if we can get a few people on. I am Michelle of Two Brothers Blanket, in case you didn't know. Um, I'm here every Wednesday, most of the time, to chat with you guys about certain topics in the crochet industry, the yarn industry, I don't know what you call it. Um, hey guys, hello, welcome, let me know you're here. Hi Marty, hi Roxana. Uh, what are you guys working on today? Crocheting, I'm trying to get a design done because I'm ready for it to be done. I wanna start on something new and I've been working on this one for a while because I started over. I've been ranting about it on Instagram stories. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I'm working on. I've been working on it all morning. Seems like constantly for the past two weeks. So, hey everyone. Hi from Georgia. Hi, how are ya? Let's see. Hi, Michelle. I'm working on a sweater. Hi, Karen. Hi, Christina. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's see, let me think while people are getting on if I have any announcements. Um, no pattern release this week, but I've got one coming next week. Should, should be coming next week. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Let's see, oh, my left-handed blog series will be coming soon. I plan on filming for that tomorrow, I think, maybe Friday, um, but I would prefer to do it tomorrow. Um, I haven't started yet because I have to get my nails done. They're a little rough looking right now, so <laughs> I'm going to go do that probably after this and then, or later this evening, so that way I can do all my filming tomorrow, like all at one time. Uh, Christina's working on a filet baby blanket of her own design. Ooh, I'm excited to see that. Miss Crystal 28 is working on an emoji pillow. Ooh, which emoji? <laughs> my, my, um, do I have lipstick on my teeth? <laughs> my kids would love a, an emoji pillow. I'm gonna have to look into that. My boys love emojis. They love that movie too. We watch that movie a lot. Um, let's see. So the left-handed is coming. Blog series is coming. If I can get everything filmed tomorrow or by by the weekend, the first blog post will be next week. We'll come next week, um, but we'll see. So, but I have like six weeks uh, worth of blog posts. It'll be a blog post a week. I know this does not apply to like the majority of you because you're not left-handed, but if you have a left-handed friend or family member that ever wants to learn how to crochet crochet you can send them to me or send them to my blog um so it's good to know I guess um it'll be like complete basics to like I'm not gonna I'll eventually add stitches stitch tutorials as I can but like for the series it'll be just the basics um and um then I'll go into reading patterns and different stuff like that. So, six weeks. One blog post a week, hopefully. Um, so, we'll see. Let's see. I'm looking forward to your left-handed crochet series coming out. It should keep my youngest busy this summer. Oh, awesome. Yay. See, yeah, if you have somebody left-handed. Um, let's see. Roxana is looking for some flower patterns to make as a teacher gift for last day of preschool. Marie says, hi Michelle, can you please tell me what the name of the cubes you have behind you for your yarn? I remember you got them on Amazon. Um, I don't know the name, but so recently I got accepted as an Amazon influencer, which only means it's the same as like being an affiliate, but I get like a storefront. So if you go to twobrothersblankets.com, which is my website, and click on my favorites up at the top menu the horizontal menu will say my favorites you can click that it'll take you right to my Amazon storefront and it will take you I mean and it will have crochet favorites it has like a my like everyday life favorites and crochet favorites you should see it right there the crochet favorites has the shelf linked right there to it 
so you can just click on the link and purchase the the shelves if you want to and I get like 3% back or something crazy like that but um, uh, yeah all my like favorites I'm, I'm still adding to it but all my favorites are right there like my Amazon favorites of everything I'm gonna try to put like everything like crochet favorites business favorites everyday life favorites like my my everyday life favorites currently has my my robot vacuum <laughs> that I got for Christmas and my curling wand <laughs> so just everyday stuff like not even related to crochet so it'll have everything like all my favorites um, so yeah you can go to that twobrothersblankets.com and then click on my favorites up at the top and it'll take you right there to that shelf um, let's see any other announcements before we get started I don't think so other than yeah a new pattern release coming next week and blog posts or left-handed blog series coming next week hopefully um also i don't know what we're gonna do as far as summer goes my kids have they'll finish out this week and then they'll have two weeks left of school and then it'll be summer so i really love the lives but i know like doing this weekly lives but i know the middle of the day is just not going to be feasible anymore so i'm thinking i'll either but i go to bed really early too so there's that um, I'm thinking we might move it to like 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So like right after I get my kids to bed. Although it'll be summer, so maybe like 9. Because they probably won't go to bed as early. I don't know. I'll let you know <laughs> when I figure it out. But we probably, after two weeks from now, we will probably switch up the time. Um, I just don't really, I, I don't really want to commit to like every Wednesday afternoon have to be home to do lives, you know, because I'm, I told y'all before, I'm trying to get all my summer work done, which is not going well, by the way, um, but so that I have more freedom, more flexibility this over the summer, so it will probably be moved to evenings, we'll probably, st I'll st probably still keep it up maybe every other week instead of every week, or like take off like Memorial Day and Fourth of July and vacation week, I don't know, we'll figure it out, but just be on the lookout for possibly a, or probably a time change. Um, okay, so we have a good number here on both. Um, I just want to chat. I didn't write anything down. I don't have a blog post ready. I just want to chat about crochet and its health benefits. Uh, May is mental health month. Um, so, and mental health is a huge has a huge impact in my life. Um, I don't know if all of you know, I've, I've talked about it before, but I don't talk about it like tons, but I have a, my oldest has severe ADHD and generalized anxiety disorder as well as, um, now I can't think of it, SPD, sensory processing disorder, but that doesn't affect him as much anymore as it did when he was younger, um, but yeah, he has some mental health issues. Uh, we deal with a lot of doctors and psychiatrists and therapies and yeah we're he's actually doing really well right now um, we've come a long way he's not in any therapy right now which is really awesome um, he's graduated from all of his therapies so there's that but it is it's an everyday thing something we deal with every day um, so mental health has a you know a big impact in my life um, and crochet has a huge impact in my life. So I just wanted to talk about how mental health, or how crochet benefits your mental health or your health in general. Um, there are physical health benefits to crochet. Um, I put a box in my stories on Instagram, <coughs> and I think it went up through to my Facebook as well, um, that was like, how does it, I just asked, how is crochet helped your health? How, how has it benefited, benefited your health? And people talked about um, it helped their rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and then there was a lot of mental health benefits as well like anxiety and um, what else? Um, cal like just calm their mind, mindless, it was their me time, stuff like that. So I did a little tiny bit of research before. Now disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I am not, I don't claim to be. This is just 
we're just going to talk, share our stories kind of thing. Um, share our, you know, how it benefits us. It's not, there's nothing, we're not prescribing nothing. We're not diagnosing nothing. We're just talking about the benefits. So I Googled um, health benefits of crochet. And hi, Brandy. And Lion Brand actually has a really good article, um, the 10 most important health benefits of yarn crafting on their website and it talks about how it's got 10 things that knitting and crochet benefit like do to benefit your health and so I'm just gonna read through them real quick knitting and crochet relieve depression they reduce crafting reduces anxiety uh, finishing a project or just working on projects build self-esteem uh, crafting may reduce or postpone dementia Knit or crochet through insomnia, it says. You all right, Liz? <laughs> She's over there coughing. Um, it says that it can help um, people that... Stitch Links did a, a UK organization, did research on the benefits of knitting, reports that a study done found that 100% of insomnia patients reported improved sleep with 90% being able to eliminate medication in a program that included knitting. That's really awesome. Uh, relaxation reduces irritability and restlessness. So it, I guess it relaxes you. Um, crafting as prayer. It says prayer has been proven to have a diverse array of health benefits. Crochet and knitting can be used as part of your prayer process. Uh, yarn crafting builds community. We know that, right? Um, crafting helps with the grief processing. And uh, number 10 is stress busting benefits of yarn crafting. Stress is one of our leading health problems. In effects, its effects range from migraines and fatigue to heart failure and early memory loss. Reducing stress reduces disease. Using knitting or crochet as meditation can be a daily way to minimize the effects of stress in your life. My contact's drying out. Um, so that was um, that was from Lion Brand. Um, if any of those things, like I'd love to know if any of those things are part of your crochet journey, like if they helped you, if um, that I named. And then I also found from the American Counseling Association, they actually have a thing called crochet therapy, and it says the purpose is working with elderly struggling with onset dementia issues and to improve memory and give purpose. It also says working with disabled to give sense of purpose, become productive, and give back to the community by donating various projects to hospitals, foster homes, and shelters. Um, and this is like a report on what they did with the crochet therapy and so they'd used yarn pattern various crochet hooks and she they did it like like a sip and stitch and for for patients and there were bene like really great benefits so that's cool um, and then I found a article by um, published by the New York Times that did a study um, on the benefits of knitting and it mentions crochet too so yarn crafts um, and it actually helped people with um, anorexia and it says a 2009 University of British Columbia study of 38 women with eating disorder anorexia nervosa who were taught to knit found that learning the craft led to significant improvements 74% of the women said the activity lessened their fears and kept them from ruminating about their problem. Did I say that right? Um, and then there was also an, more studies on people with chronic pain um, and, again, dementia and, like, um, you know, getting older. Lucy, go lay down. You're, you're, you're being noisy. Go. <laughs> um, so... Lots and lots of benefits, um, definitely. Um, oh, I hope that's not vibrating. Sorry, guys. Hold on. I forgot to turn my phone on silent. All right. Um, fourth Gen Studio say, says crochet has been instrumental in my mental health. Yes, me too. Roxana says crochet helped me after my miscarriage. Lisa says, crocheting and crafting definitely helps me with all my issues. That's awesome. Marty says, I have bad anxiety. I call crocheting my therapy. Yes. Brandy says, I have bipolar and anxiety, and when I have to go to appointments, I take my crochet so that I don't have any episodes. It has helped me so much not to have panic attacks. 
Very nice. Uh, I definitely agree. Crochet has so many health benefits. It has so many mental health benefits. Like even just, I think, and somebody uh, touched on this in my stories, the stories box, that it's just like the counting or the, the concentration it takes just kind of like keeps your mind strong and keeps your mind off of other things and away from the anxiety and the thoughts and the what ifs and the, you know, all that. So, um, I'll just share a little bit about what crochet has done for me. There's two in instances that I really think of that have helped me where crochet has helped me mentally or my mental health. Um, I can't, I don't know, physically, I mean, I guess it, I mean, my hands are strong <laughs> and my arms, um, but honestly, I sit so much because I'm crocheting so much, so I don't know that it has the most health benefits physically for me, um, but I don't have, like, arthritis or anything like that, um, but for me, mentally, crochet, there's two times in life that I can really say, like, crochet helped me get through it. Um, after I had my second son, who is seven now, I had postpartum anxiety. It wasn't, I didn't feel depressed. I felt anxious constantly. Um, I would be up in the middle of the night with the baby. The baby would fall back asleep. I would not be able to go to sleep because I was anxious. And then I would get into this huge, horrible tailwind of, oh my God, the baby's going to be up in two hours and I'm not even asleep yet. Why am I not asleep? And it would just Oh, it was just the worst anxiety, the worst. And so um, I picked crochet back up. Um, I had learned to crochet when I was pregnant with him, but then I didn't touch it after he was born for a while. And so I picked it back up and it relieved that anxiety so much that I was able to come off of the medicine that they had put me on for the anxiety. Um, that and exercising both helped so much during that time. I was so anxious. I don't remember a time being anxious, that anxious. Um, so there's that. Um, and then two years, it's been almost two years. Next month, June 1st, will be two years here in Florida that we moved to Florida from Georgia. When we moved here to, in June of 2017, uh, I was a mess. I was a mess. Like I got into, I would call it circumstantial depression. Um, I don't struggle with depression like day to day. Like I know a lot of people do where it just comes and it hits and it, it just happens. But I definitely have struggled with circumstantial depression is what I, I guess you would call it. I think that's what the doctor, the name the doctor gave it when I went to see a doctor about it. But I was miserable and it took me a while. A good year maybe more um, to get to where I felt happy again and felt content with being here <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie like it was hard this move was so hard we moved away from our families we moved away from our friends we moved away from the only house we had ever owned I mean it was it was hard and I had a really hard time and then my son who also struggles um, with his ADHD and anxiety too he had a really hard time so we were dealing i was dealing with my own anxiety and my own depression and as well as trying to be there for him and deal with his meltdowns and crying fits and anxiety and all the things right so i remember being miserable being sad and i would crochet and i would be like well at least i still have crochet like crochet was the one constant in my life at that time that when everything else was different and new and changed. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, it was the one thing in my life that was the same. I still had crochet. I still had two brothers blankets. I still had you guys. <laughs> like it was the constant in my life that I needed to keep going, like to keep pushing forward, to keep trying to like it here and to keep, you know, trying to adjust. And I knew no matter what happened that day, no matter if Noah melted down that day or, you know, had an incident or anything, or if I had an incident or if I couldn't get out of bed that day, at least I could crochet. At least I was able to, I knew I would crochet. 
And so it was constant for me. Like it wasn't even the, the physical act of crocheting. It was just the constant of being able to do that. And that was something I did every day in, in Georgia at my own home. And I could still do that every day here. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, it was that center for me. It really was. It truly was. So that's, those are the two instances for me um, that really stick out where crochet has been a, a benefit to my mental health for sure. Um, every day, day to day, it still helps. It still helps me not to get too anxious. When I cannot crochet for a few days, like after two days, if I don't get a chance to crochet, I get stressed out and I get anxious. <laughs> it's like, I need to crochet. I'm freaking out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, so it's still beneficial. It still helps me. It's like I said, when I am worried, I'll crochet and I'll worry about the, the counts, the stitch count and the stitches, and it just takes my mind off of things. But those are the two like main things where it really made a difference. Like without crochet, I don't know if I would have made it through. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So um, let's see. Kim says crochet is a definite reminder. I'm not dumb because I make so many amazing things. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Marie says, I am the caregiver to my 31-year-old handicapped son, and crocheting helps me de-stress from that. I also have generalized anxiety. Crocheting truly is more than just a craft to me. Yes, I agree. Um, Kim says, thank you for sharing your story. It takes a lot of courage. And yes, crochet is a huge lifeline for us to go forward. It is. Um, Shawnee says, I've... I'm glad I've been crocheting for 13 years because it has taught me that I am good at something and that I do have something to offer to the world. Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, Brandy says, Michelle, I hope you truly know <laughs> what an inspiration you are, that you are willing to talk openly about your faith and mental health, which has for some reason become a taboo subject. Still openly acknowledge them. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, thank you for listening and accepting <laughs> my story. I know it probably didn't seem... Like, I was having such a hard time to, you know, it's been almost two years. But I, honestly, things did not, like, I didn't settle into Florida until probably last summer. So maybe a year ago. So it took me a good year. Maybe not even. Maybe, like, this fall. We went to, no, it was last summer. Because we went back to Georgia last June for, just to visit our family for a week. And here felt like home and there felt like um, not home. You know what I'm saying? Like we went in September when we had just moved so we'd only been here for like three months and we had to go back for, because of Hurricane Irma and um, Lucy keeps getting up. I think there's, I keep thinking there's someone here um, because of Hurricane Irma. So we went back like three months after we moved here and it fe still felt like home. Like Georgia still felt like home. But then we went back in June, I think it was June and Sarasota felt like home. Florida felt like home. So it felt like we were visiting in a way. And you know what I'm saying? So it took me a good year and I still miss it every day. But I'm adjusted. Do you know what I mean? So that big old stick. It's, I just noticed the big old stick. That's how I film. <laughs> That's how I film my overhead. Um, my husband did it. He like stuck some PVC pipe in the shelf. And I just noticed it. It's like right over my head. Um, let's see... Crochet Addicts Anonymous, <laughs> Kim says. Um, Brandy says, I remember when you went through that and you handled it so gracefully. Oh, well, thank you. It didn't feel graceful. Y'all didn't see all the, <laughs> all the um, times I didn't want to get out of bed and I cried. And <laughs> um, yeah, I almost left a few times. It was bad. It was really bad. But like I said, crochet helped me. And um, it was very... Like, I just remember thinking it. I remember thinking, well, at least I have crochet. It's crazy. You know, I mean, I know it doesn't have crazy to y'all, but it would probably to someone who has never crocheted before. They wouldn't understand, but I know you guys get it. So, it's okay. I feel I feel comfortable talking about it. Um, and, and that's the thing, too. Like, we have to talk about it. When we are feeling down and depressed or anxious, like, I feel like that's why the whole point of, like, mental health month too like we have to talk about it people there's such a stigma around my son's ADHD um, and I always I'm the same way I thought 
ADHD was you can't focus, you can't, you can't, you know, squirrel, right? There's so much more to it, so many more components. So I always, like on my personal Facebook page, I try to share information when I learn it, and I try to share it with others because, aware, like, awareness and knowledge is the best thing we can do for ourselves, you know? Like, to be aware, to be non-judgmental, to be like, I don't understand that, but I see that you're going through that, or I, I acknowledge that this is a thing, and this is a problem, or this is hard for you, or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Um, we have to talk about it. We have to be aware. We have to, you know, provide information and 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 learn and try to learn and try not try, not not necessarily try to understand, not necessarily try to um, fix it or ha or or whatever, like, I don't know, prejudge, or, I don't know, but we just need, sometimes we just gotta acknowledge, you know, just acknowledge that, that they're, that you're dealing with this, and I, I don't understand it, but I'm, I'm here, kind of thing, you know what I mean, so it's good to talk about it, it's good to, you know, spread, spread the knowledge when, when needed, um, Helen says it's like a hobby, it's an escape. People think we're just crazy because it's crochet. <laughs> it is, it's like an escape sometimes, definitely. Um, it's just, I don't know. But pe you're right, people don't get it, and I think we're cray cray. <laughs> um, Sh Sh Shawnee, Shoni, am I saying that right? Says, my cat only loves me when I'm crocheting. <laughs> um, Marzi Rose. I don't know if I'm saying that, on Instagram says crochet is my de-stressor too. Yes, definitely. It's so nice. I wish we could just do it all the time, right? Um, but housework, right? Ugh. <laughs> it always ruins everything. <laughs> um, let's see. Colbrun? I don't know if I'm saying these names right, y'all. I am cray cray and proud of it. LOL. I crochet more for my dogs than for me. Oh, that's awesome. I don't think my Lucy girl would let me put anything too much on her. Uh, <laughs> she wouldn't like it too much. Although, I've thought about making her like a bed. I've made her like a scrap blanket. Uh, Brandy says it makes complete sense. There are a lot of people that don't understand how someone from the outside looks so put together and be falling apart on the inside. Yes, exactly. Um, Yes, when I'm doing my project, I'm thinking about my project. Yeah, exactly. Like, it just keeps our minds preoccupied. And it's got to be, like, like I, that's uh, the Lion Brand and the New York Times articles both said it is, it helps with dementia. Like, it, it helps keep your mind sharp even. Like, just counting stitches and doing math. I never thought I'd be doing math. That's my job. <laughs> um, for me, it's my job. And there's a lot of math. And so, it is... It keeps your brain sharp as well. Like it just keeps, and it keeps your mind off of the anxious things that, you know, the what ifs. And I know that my, my mind. That's why I like to work. I do love my mindless projects, but like I do like designing too because of the math and the, the brain work that it takes. It takes a lot of, and that's why I also don't. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever shared this, but I don't design when my kids are around unless I'm like full on into it and like it's just like this I'm just finishing up like it's just the stitches over and over again there's no math I'm done with the math and all that and um when my kids are around I'm like I can't my brain there's too much noise <laughs> there's too much go fighting or whatever so I just I don't try to start a design or like do the math part of a design unless it's quiet so that's why in the summer I don't get a lot done, <laughs> and I don't know how this is going to work next year either. Um, your name is hard. I am from, you're from Iceland. Yeah, did I say it right? How do you pronounce it? Can you spell how you pronounce it? She says, my puppies love blankets from Burnett Baby Blanket Yarn. Oh, those are, yeah, I bet that's a good way. I should make my doggies some. Are the, is that like sturdy enough to make like a bed or just blankets? Uh, Brandy is making her Boss, my Boston blanket right now for my great nephew, new great nephew. Aw, yay! I, I'm working. I'm working on a corner to corner blanket for a new baby. And then 
Oh, I just made some Boston washcloths. That's what I was going to tell you. I had just made some Boston with the Karen cotton. Oh, here they are. With Karen cotton cakes. I had left over. This is, I didn't buy any new ones. I know they're back at Michael's. Uh, I know it's back. But this is left over from my Magnolia market bag last year. They came out this time last year. Um, so I had, so it doesn't even take a full, no, it did. It took a skein and a half or a cake and a half for the market bag, I think. And then I had half of a skein left and I got two. And I could, okay, so this one's big. And I could have, um, I could have gotten two full ones. This one's a little bit smaller, but I accidentally didn't make enough stitches. So this one's a little bit smaller, but I had a tiny bit left. So I could have made two full size ones, but I got two washcloths out of half a skein of Karen cotton cakes. So that was awesome. This is my Boston. <laughs> I didn't even want to fool with it, but it turned pink and I could have like adjusted, but I'm going to use them for my kitchen in my kitchen. So, or the bath for the boys or something, but didn't they turn out cute? I want, it makes me want to go get some more Karen cotton cakes. I'm still on my yarn diet. I got a couple weeks left, May 20th, random day. Um, <clears throat> Bell49660 says, just acknowledging some of the issues is a big stress relief. You are correct. That is true. That is very true. Um, Marilyn says, having a creative hobby can be an outlet for energy and ideas that otherwise have no way out. Our brains need work to do, and mine needs Prozac. No shame involved. I hear you, girl. Same here. Well, not currently. <laughs> I have been on medicine, and my son has been on medicine, so don't even... Don't, no shame. No shame in that game, right? Um, she met, uh, Colbrun? I, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> she says, I make beds and blankets. Cole. Cole? Cole. Kind of like Cole. Okay, good. Cole Brew. Okay, Cole. I'm going to call you Cole. Nice to meet you, Cole. <laughs> um, bed, beds and blankets. Okay, good. I think I want to make her like a bed for our bedroom. She likes to lay in our bedroom a lot, so. And we have wooden floors in our bedroom, and we haven't gotten a rug for it yet, so that's on the list of many things, right? Always something on that list. Um, all right, well, if you guys, does anybody have any questions? Anything, anybody want to share anything else? Um, definitely, I will say this. I sound like that commercial, but if you're struggling, if you're, if this you know, resonates with you, um, if despite crochet you are struggling, do not be ashamed to get help, whether that be going to the doctor, talking to a therapist, talking to your best friend, talking to a pastor, whatever you need to do, like there is no shame, there is no, there are so many people in this world today that struggle with anxiety and struggle with depression and struggle with just not being able to share things with other people feeling like they can't and you can so please 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 do not be afraid to get some help to talk to somebody there's even y'all I have even looked into it there's you can do online therapy now where you don't even have to go into a place you don't have to leave your house you can talk to a certified licensed therapist online now there's like apps I'm not even kidding. Like, like Talkspace? Have you seen the commercials for Talkspace? Like, that's a real thing. And it's real therapist. So, never be ashamed. Never to be ashamed if, um, if crocheting is just not, not enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that sounds crazy because <laughs> it's crochet. But, um, never, never be ashamed. Be afraid. Reach out. Reach out to anyone. Reach out to me if you have to. Um, but don't don't keep it to yourself. Don't leave don't leave things unsettled. So um, that's my advice of the day. <laughs> I don't know, um, but I hope this was beneficial to you guys. I hope crochet is beneficial to you guys and your health, um, as it is mine. Um, and yeah, so next week I will be here. I don't know the topic yet. Maybe something on left-handed crochet or to or about. Um, the new design, we'll chat about that. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, but Wednesday at 1 p.m. for the next two weeks. And then um, we'll change it. I'll let you know 
before the end of the next, you know, before my kids are out of school, when the times will come, but I'm thinking evening, um, and we'll kind of just play it by ear, so I'm going to head out. I will talk to you guys later. This was fun. I enjoyed chatting with you guys. Um, I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.